Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to Good Morning, New Hampshire. Let's begin. First up, gas prices rising ahead of Memorial Day weekend. Let's take a listen to the video from WMR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. You may notice the price going Back up when day. you gas. Sorry about that. Back in the day, Bell Tapes knew that if we provided quality products and honest service, customers would come back again and again. Have things changed? Sure. But what hasn't is Bell Tapes' commitment to giving you a fair price and friendly service. Visit us at belltapes.com. You may notice the price going up when you gas up. Yeah, I definitely have. While New Hampshire remains below the national average, we're seeing a state average at about $2.85 a gallon. That's 55 cents more than we were paying a year ago. For the most part, the Granite State is keeping it under $3 a gallon, except at rest areas along the highway where prices are usually higher. I, I just try not to look at it. Still got to do it. Kind of think I'm at a point where like, I've kind of come to accept it because, you know, sometimes it goes up. Drivers accepting the change in price says this is a trend we typically see when the busy summer season draws near and more people are expected to be out on the roads. At first, like the first few times it happened, I was like, oh, I'm angry, but now I'm just like, ah, another day in the life. These are the highest gas prices in the last three years. According to AAA, the national average jumped six cents in the past week, due in part to the White House's decision to reimpose sanctions on Iran. They predict the average could jump as high as $3 a gallon at some point this summer, while locally some are finding ways to pinch pennies any way they can. I got an electric bike, so I'm going to be able to ride to work in the summer, which is nice, so that will help. All right, so there's good news and there's bad news. Let's get the bad news out of the way first. Experts do expect these prices to continue to rise through the holiday weekend next week. But the good news, they should start to decline after Memorial Day. We're live in Manchester tonight. Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we want to hear from you. Are you going to be traveling for the Memorial Day weekend? That is coming right around the corner. That's next weekend. Let us know. Comment below and let us know if you are planning on traveling this Memorial Day weekend. Parents accept diploma for Salem State grad killed days before graduation. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. It's time to upgrade at Nissan's Tech for All sales event. Get 0% financing on every model, including Rogue with ProPilot Assist. Hurry, event ends soon. Now's the time to save with exclusive offers like this. It's a day that Chris Choice had dreamed about for years. A day to celebrate the hard work and sacrifice required to get a college degree. Extremely proud of him. Everybody's proud of him. First male to graduate, um, and it is a big deal. But tragically, Chris wasn't the one walking across the stage at Salem State University Saturday. Chris's mother and father walked for him, accepting the diploma on their son's behalf just two weeks after he was shot and killed. We just wish that it wasn't this type of day that, you know, somebody has to walk for him. Police say Chris and a family friend, 58-year-old Claiborne Blair, had been standing outside the Haley Apartments in Jamaica Plain with a group of men and were the unintended targets of a man shooting at random. I wish that whoever did it, they would have got, got to, to know, know Chris. As an individual. As an individual. And not label him from where he, where he was at. Chris's family is angry, upset, and saddened. But the emotion they feel the most today is pride. Pride that Chris accomplished his goal 
got his diploma and inspired so many people in his 23 years. I had 10 grandchildren. He was a role model for all of them. He had big plans and big goals, and he was going after them. He smiled his way through all his challenges. He let people know that it's not where you come from, it's who you are. And there were so many relatives of Christopher Joyce here today that the family filled three vans and several cars just to get to graduation. Those vans, by the way, provided by the city of Boston for free. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Gorham Police hosts active shooter training at school. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 Bain. It's time to upgrade at Nissan's Tech for All sales event. Get 0% financing on every model, including Rogue with ProPilot Assist. Hurry, event ends soon. Now's the time to save with exclusive offers like this. In 22 school shootings in the United States this year, while none of those shootings were here in Maine, law enforcement is taking steps to prepare themselves and protect our communities should an incident take place. A full-scale active shooter training was held today at Gorham High School. Agencies and emergency medical services from Cumberland and York counties took part. Organizers say these drills are a community effort beyond just law enforcement. It's uh, so important as well for... Uh you know, building relationships with your community and with your school communities, the students uh, within your schools as well, um, to try to prevent these types of incidents. Communication between uh, those types of communities and your local law enforcement are very important so that maybe we can prevent some of these incidents from happening before they do happen. Dozens of volunteers helped participate in today's drill. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Very good to do drills like that. Mother of Santa B shooting victim says daughter turned down suspect's advice. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. We are here in Texas tonight at the scene of the latest mass shooting at an American school. Tonight, an entire campus wrapped in police tape. This one taking the lives of 10 people, eight of them students. A gunman in a trench coat opening fire early yesterday morning. Students sent fleeing. First responders rushing in. Two police officers confronting that shooter. The suspect, a 17-year-old student, surrendered and allegedly confessed to the crime. He has already appeared before a judge and is now charged with murder. Tonight, a portrait of the gunman is coming into focus, and we're getting a clearer picture of what it was like to be inside that terrifying attack. Tonight, the injury count rising in that deadly school shooting in Santa Fe, Texas. Police say 10 people were killed, most of them students. And now 13 are recovering from injuries, including gunshot wounds. Are you a citizen of the United States? Yes, sir. Are you requesting consideration for a court-appointed attorney? Yes, sir. The alleged teenage killer facing a judge, charged with capital murder, and being held in solitary confinement tonight, He's on suicide watch. He is in a place where I'm not sure what he understands. Lawyers for the alleged killer, 17-year-old Demetrios Pagorchis, have now met with him twice. Police say the teenage shooter took a shotgun and a pistol that belonged to his father. His lawyers say the guns were locked in a gun cabinet. The parents had no idea of their son's alleged plan. They didn't know, they didn't expect, and they surely couldn't have predicted. Yeah. That was shooting, was in the art room, we got... We got shot fired right now, guys. Students tell ABC News the alleged shooter came through the back of the school. Authorities say he was also carrying explosive devices that did not function. Sophomore Rome Schubert was inside the first classroom targeted. 
He says the shooter first tossed in one of those homemade bombs. He threw something at the desk, and I heard it, but I didn't think nothing of it. It just sounded like a pin. Five seconds later, a loud bang. I hear it started ringing. Loud bang, loud bang. And then it just everything kind of went crazy from there. Schubert, a star pitcher on the school's baseball team, says he barricaded himself behind a desk before running for safety, not knowing he had been shot in the head. Luckily, the bullet exiting with minimal damage. I had no idea. So I looked at my shirt, and it was blood dripping down, and then my friend came up behind me and said, he got shot in the back of the head. Students say they remember hearing a fire alarm going off, alerting them of danger. Students running out of their classrooms to hear gunshots and see their classmates wounded and dying on the floor. We were playing dead. Police and SWAT teams surrounding the school, kids lining up on the field, emptying their backpacks for officers to inspect their hands on their heads. I didn't know what to think. I should have been going through this at my school. Like, this is my daily life. I should not have to feel like that. And I feel scared to even go back. Students we spoke with say the gunman was quiet and odd, but not violent. He'd wear the trench coat always? Every day. Every single day. Even if it was 90 degrees outside? Every single day. Investigators still have not said what set the teen off. According to the probable cause affidavit, the suspect surrendered, allegedly telling police he did not shoot students he did like so he could have his story told. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's turn things over to weather. Your weather right now is overcast, 54 degrees. Weather for today is mostly cloudy and mild with a few key storms. Highs in the mid-70s. And for tonight, Mostly clear, low around 50 degrees, winds northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with our second half of Good Morning New Hampshire. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 